Hi, I'm Kathleen. And I'm Sean. And you're listening to the Dead Baby Bear Podcast. Dead Baby Bear. Long story. (laughs) Start it here. Excuse me. Oh, gross. (laughs) Welcome back to the podcast. (laughs) How long of a break have we had? Like a week. Because I was gone last week. We had we did one before that, but then last week. That's right. Where were you last week, Kathleen? I was in Vancouver at Laugh Lines or New West at Laugh Lines. How is it? It was fun. It was very fun. Uh, It was only two shows, but um, I was happy with what they paid me for two shows. So I was like, oh, okay. This is exciting. But no, it was very fun. And now it's turning into a house of comedy. So we'll never headline there again. No, uh, Kathleen. We will host in middle all the time, like once a month. <laughs> well, you're not... For the will- people listening, I'm <laughs> staring at the camera. <laughs> you're not afraid to go there. No, I just think... I mean, like, because... Hey, Rick has said it. He said people are going to be pissed off. And headliners, because we just don't book a lot of Canadians. They don't. They, they know they don't. They admit yeah. they don't. But he said, but like... You're either going to play there two times a year or maybe once a year if you're a headliner or once every two years with how many headliners they have. Or you could play there like a couple times a year as a host or a middle. Yeah. And at like this point, I don't care about headlining anymore. Well, (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not really. I I mean, maybe I don't know enough about the Vancouver scene, but my guess is uh, I don't think they're going to have that gigantic of a roster. You know what I mean? Like in in terms of like. Um, I think that they're thinking in terms of Edmonton, where basically every Edmonton comedian, 98% of every Edmonton comedian yeah. would play the comic strip. Yeah. And so you end up having, you know, you end up, you know, maybe playing there two, three times a year yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to be like that in Vancouver. I think oh, it's going to be a bunch. Oh, you people are going to jump over on I board? think there's going to be a bunch of, I think you're going to have, you're not going to have that many people that are willing to go out there. Uh, to New West Minster yeah. and make seventy five dollars, or you know yeah. what I mean. Like, I think, th- yeah, I think they'll have a tighter roster. They'll have, you know, same thing as in Edmonton when it first started. Yeah, you'll have like ten, fifteen people that are like, sure, I'll go out there and I'll do it for whatever. And but I don't think like the headliner people are no, going to be I like, don't think, no, definitely. So yeah, your top, your top twenty, thirty comics in Vancouver, they're not going to be tripping over each other to go out there. Uh, to New West. No, but I will because I just want <laughs> I just want to work. I just yeah. want I really just want to like have shows every weekend so that I don't forget how to sit do at home and try to kill yourself. Yeah, I need to be out of the house. I need to be out of the house, and it's it's easy for me to get there. So, like I, I like I'm sure there's going to be headliners in Vancouver that are like this is fucking bullshit and whatever. And in a way, it is like it's a flaw that they don't book a lot of Canadians, but they're doing. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it, I mean, you know, rumors deserves a lot of credit rumors yeah. books, you know, they have rumors has the opportunity oh, yeah. to book exclusively Americans. Yeah. They could, I yeah. mean, it would be easy enough for them and the crowds wouldn't notice a fucking difference. Yeah. And in some cases, like, you know, the reason that model is in play, the reason Bronson and, and some of these other clubs will bring in more Americans is because you sell more tickets when it says Los Angeles on the poster. It's so true, though. It just does. And so Canadians not... are, you know, if can, like if Canadi- if you put on the poster from Edmonton, Alberta, Kathleen yeah. McGee, you're, you're, your pre-sales will be nothing. You know, 30, 40. And then if, if it's from Los Angeles, the pre-sales will be yeah. double or triple that, you know. But that's also something that the Canadian audiences need to start changing and like stop, stop just like running because you see like has a million subscribers, not even just Canadian, but comedy audiences audiences in general stop going to people that have a million youtube subscribers and no stand-up comedy well especially when you know that you can somebody can purchase that yeah like you can buy it so it's like i don't necessarily if i go and like hey how many hits does this how many followers yeah. does this guy have on instagram or twitter or whatever you can buy that yeah so i mean you, you could book somebody at your club who you think has 500,000 followers or whatever yeah. but you know they paid ten thousand dollars and bought most of them yeah and the other thing about like this trip is just like, I don't like I'm not saying any of this is in trouble, but sometimes the headliners will come out and I'll be like, well, this person's good, but there is somebody closer in a town that's just as funny as them. That's that's the frustrating part is that they'll. But I know that because they book, it's how it's how America works. They have these agencies, and you're with an agency. So if if you want to do just for laughs, you're with Bill Burr's agency. Then your agent says, well, you guys can have Bill Burr, but you also have to book this guy. And suddenly this person's at just for laughs. And that's yeah. how it works 
down there and we don't have any kind of system like that here so there's nobody fighting for us but ourselves no because nobody's fighting to get any of the top canadians or what you know what i mean no but that's and then that's our fault though because the reason why nobody sells out when they hear kathleen b is they don't know who we are because none of these clubs promote us rumors does rumors puts any every headliner on the air they put them on their yeah like and they're they're trying to promote Canadians on the same level as Americans, which is all we're asking for. I think is just to be able to play in our yeah, own club. And there's, I mean, I think um, who would be the other independent? Like you know, who's the, the laugh shop's pretty good. They still the laugh shop will book Canadians. Yeah, yeah, they so. book Canadians and then they book their their concert series. I'm I love that idea, that concert series idea. For three weeks out of the month, book some Canadian headliners and then bring in a concert series. But I think they just or I mean you could have, or, or you could have two Canadians and American in a concert. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like just but, mix it up a teeny little but bit. But yeah, you're yeah. I, I I think it's just one of those things where clubs feel like if I'm booking Canadians, then I'm booking a small time club. Yeah, right. It's a mindset. I know it is a mindset. So the mindset is if I'm bringing in people from Los Angeles and New York City, yeah. and whatever, then I'm in show business. Yes, it's true. And if I'm booking Canadians, then I'm not really in show business. I'm, I'm just, just I'm just booking a club. I'm entertaining people. And so <laughs> you're you know, it's in service of the ego of the people that are booking it also. All of this help. Yeah, right? all of this. Absolutely. So some of it is just your pre sales where LA is gonna get you more hits than a Vancouver guy. But I mean there's you can't tell me there's a big difference between we're gonna bring in Graham Clark from Vancouver and we're gonna bring in somebody from Los Angeles that yeah. you know, like Gr- Graham Clark's gonna come in, he's gonna kill. Yeah. He's a great comic. I yeah. mean, the crowds are going to love him. He has fans from his podcast. I yeah. mean, there's a ton of reasons to bring in those guys, but it is a mindset where you just feel like I'm. If I'm, it's a Canadian audience mindset, and the and, club and too. the club yeah. has that Canadian small just don't, small man syndrome mindset, right? Yeah, yeah. To, I, where it's like if it's if it's not L.A. If I'm booking guy, if I'm in talks to bring in some guy from Saskatoon, yeah. then what am I doing? Yeah, but yeah, if exactly. I'm in talks to bring in a guy from LA, then hey, we're in show business, baby. Do you like, think that if the people even like demanded, like if people even like if if 500 people wrote the comic strip and said, "I want Kathleen or Sean to headline," do you think they would do it, or they would just be like, "This is silly"? No. <laughs> well, know? they wouldn't do that. You no. never, <laughs> let's yeah, let's try. try. 500 people. No, we'll they wouldn't. I mean, they they. I think you know it's sort of the same thing as the diversity question. Yeah. Where you're now you are seeing more women on posters uh-huh. at comedy clubs because women, regular women, are saying like, Hey, I want to see yeah. a female. I want so now they're actually getting some people that are contacting the clubs and saying, Why aren't we seeing more women? Yeah. And they're on their Facebook pages saying, Another month of all guys? Yeah. Question mark. And so that gets in people's heads of like, Oh shit, we need to diversify. Yeah. It's it's similar with, you know, Canadians, Americans, like they're the audiences aren't asking for it, yeah, and so the clubs will continue to run on their model, yeah. Right? I mean, so until people start saying like, you know what, I'd actually, if I'm going to go there, I would like to support Canadian, yeah. But like, we don't give a shit in general. Coming- like even even when you're talking about shopping at Walmart, yeah, we don't fucking care if it's made in China, Taiwan, it's or Prince cheaper. Albert. Yeah, it's eighteen dollars cheaper, yeah. and I'm buying it. Yeah. You know, like no, it totally. looks cooler, and I'm buying it. Nobody, nobody, like, this is the problem is like all these comedians are all frustrated and trying to be like, and I always feel funny because nobody cares when they, nobody cares. They're, some of the comedy nerds care about who's on the stage, but in Canada in general, and I don't know if it's like this in the States, people don't, people are like, let's just go to comedy. They don't say, let's go to see Con- Charlotte well, Comber. Let's go to, they just like, let's just go to a comedy show and see and whoever. I, I can't even say that I'd be different. Like if I'd never no, got, I know this if is I'd like never, a, yeah. if I'd never gotten into stand up. Um, and I was just a regular dude. Like I didn't go watch stand up anyway. I didn't but if either. I did, I probably would be like, "Who that guy's come? That guy's coming from Los Angeles. Yeah, that guy lives in Short Park. Yeah, I'm going to go and see the guy from Los Angeles because I know that he's had to overcome yeah some hurdles in his career. Like oh, the, yeah. he or she is probably when uh probably not though because let's just say Amer- Americans don't have very many like logistical hurdles if they live in America. You no. Can- you can move to New York or LA very quickly. Oh, and sure. And then it's up to you to whether you're talented or you're just a little hustler. Yeah, but, for sure. And then, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's hilarious to think that if I had seen LA, I would have been like, he's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if I hadn't seen LA, I would have been like, I don't know what he's been through. Yeah. Oh, like, I know. Maybe he just does open mics in, you know, in Short <laughs> Park. 
But like, yeah, L.A. is just a geographical location. It means yeah. nothing. No. You know, that you could just, yeah, you can, you know, and how many people do we know that move to L.A. and it's like, man, you know, you got to give them credit. And it's like, I need to know first, like, how much money they get from their parents. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> that is, a helpful that is the, the, you know, like, so you can be in Los Angeles <laughs> But you're, you know, you're being supplemented yeah. every month by your parents' money. Oh, my and parents, so that's not a hustle. That's my not parents a, were like doing everything they could to try to get me to stay down there. <laughs> get, don't come back. I, I'm not going to lie that I'm, I don't think I'm on this level of getting my parents, but I, my parents are, have been able to bail me out when I needed it where some yeah, people Yeah, but they weren't bailing you out to the tune of like, here, honey, go no. to fucking SeaWorld and feed the fish. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, Like, yeah. They, they were <laughs> bailing you out like, my landlord needs this or yeah. I have to leave. I know, when I see some comments, I'm like, this person never works down there. What is, how much did they save? That's my first thought. <laughs> <laughs> how much did they save? They must have one of those credit cards <laughs> that you never yeah. have to pay off. They must have a relative who passed recently. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one too when i see like somebody like midlife all of a sudden yeah. in la i'm like somebody died yes yep. somebody fucking died that is a thing yeah don't know who but somebody's dead <laughs> and that somebody left that person over fifty thousand. <laughs> and they were like time to move to los angeles as they stared into a mirror i think that's what my mom thought when she she's like i don't want to leave her too much money so she tries to fly around somewhere i gotta keep her <laughs> so so she's like no we're not leaving her anything <laughs> yeah keep the bird in the cage i'm gonna rack out my visa we don't want yes. kathleen flying around and fucking dying on newsprint oh my god no yeah i didn't even oh my god i didn't even get to the islands part i just oh how was the island. islands the part? islands i was in the gulf islands Ooh. I went to Galliano. Did you know that bears sometimes swim between islands? Yes, isn't, isn't that, that Isn't that kind of weird? They're smarter than and we give them credit for. And deer can swim, too. That's Do they our deer. swim those distances? Yeah. Really? They have deer out on Pender Island, like, too many, yeah. because they swam out there. Yeah, when I was on Gabriola, they were talking about how, like, you know, oh, well, we don't usually have bears, but sometimes we do, because they'll swim over from that other island. And I'm like, that fucking island? Like... It's like kilometers away. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I maybe guess. they have some secret transportation system that we don't know about. They like, we could. don't play. Maybe they got, like, maybe animals have some underground train system. Railroad. I thought you were. <laughs> 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 I thought you were going to. The underground railroad for bears. <laughs> that would have been a very good. Uh, I'm not going to that racist island. <laughs> That's Bear Slave Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just bears going on the underground animal <laughs> railway. <laughs> Yeah, to get away from animal slavery. Yeah, that's how they get out. But it's you, a real problem. <laughs> yeah, bears can swim. But the shows were fun and the good shows and were exciting. Fun. I got to go to Salt Spring Island for the first time. It was beautiful. It was good. Did and you go? Did you take the boy? No, he's always where he never can. Yeah, he I guess work he's working a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. He works a lot, and I did not take the dogs because I have to take both of them, and it's like that's a bit of a, a headache. One was easy, but and they're fine at home. They'd rather be at home. That's what I tell yeah. myself. Well, I was in Carrot River. Where's Carrot River? Carrot River, is Saskatchewan. It a, is it an orange river? No, it Why is, is it not an orange. River? I don't know. It's Saskatchewan has funny names for things. I know my grandma was born in eyebrow or elbow, one of those parts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they probably have a. I mean, if you just Google any two words together, the, the like if you just wrote, if you just put in slave face, <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, fuck, there is a slave face, Saskatchewan. <laughs> So funny, go to the bar and like pretend you're from Slave Face, Saskatchewan. Hi there, I'm from Slave Face. <laughs> and then you'll meet other people. I'm like, sorry, what? <laughs> people will also be like, oh yeah, slaves, good people don't want to act like Oh, that. I love slavers. I yeah. love Slave Face, You don't want to get me going. I'm just your typical <laughs> Slave Face, Saskatchewan farm boy. And <laughs> let me tell you something. No, I wouldn't do that. No, no, don't No, do that. but I mean, yeah, Christmas party comedy is probably the funniest type of comedy because yeah. usually... The only reason you've been hired is because somebody that works for the company um, thinks they're hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I would yeah, not all not all of them, but I would say like sixty percent of them. Some the reason that they because they have you know like an allotted amount of money, and it's like, what do you want to do? Get better catering, get a better DJ, get a hypnotist, whatever. Like for yeah, somebody comedian. to for somebody to say like we want a stand up comedian, there's usually somebody that works there at a high level that thinks thinks fan? they're hilarious. Like no, 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 hilarious. thinks they're hilarious. So a lot of times they try to fuck you. They'll try to fuck you. Yeah. At a, you'll, so you'll do a Christmas party 
and it'll be a guy giving away awards and then you're like that's the guy who thinks he's hilarious yeah. it's the boss and he's throwing little barbs at people and like or you can go at lucy uh she's probably already shit-faced <laughs> and then people kind of laugh and and then they'll try to sewer you and then you can like so they're trying to be funny yeah uh, during the lead up and then they'll be like and we got a comedian I'll leave that to the professional so they <laughs> so they can make a lot of comedian references yeah. <laughs> and then tell their jokes sort of you know they're so they're insulated from being a stand up comedian but they're still like telling jokes telling little barbs and whatever yeah and then they'll bring you up like hey woo, woo, comedian <laughs> come here comedian <laughs> Like they they'll bring you up like you know like you call a dog for supper like Woo! off to the stage yeah you'll be in the back of the room and they'll be like you know whistle Woo-hoo! come here hey oh comedian Woo! come on up so then you oh. kind of like start going to the stage and then they'll be like well here he is um, comedian we got a comedian this year hope he's funny <laughs> um, oh. here he is so you get brought up like that. And then you're like, hey, everybody. Uh, and then immediately that bot, the heckler or that guy who thinks he's funny will start heckling you. Oh, really? Yeah. So they'll go Jesus. sit in the front row and then they'll start like barbing. You know, they'll start like. I paid for this. To, I can they'll say start, what I want. Yeah, exactly. Oh and they're like, God. I paid for this. This is my money. You fucking, you have to accept Dance this. Dance for me, comedy Yeah, puppet. you have to accept this as part of the transaction. You can't be like. Listen, fuck face, shut your mouth. Like you have to be like, I oh mean, yes, I would. <laughs> I've got um, the yes, coming already. sir. Um, thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> did, you, did you do well? Um, not really. I mean, you know, it depends on where you're. Like For Christmas, a Christmas party. Yeah, I mean, Christmas yeah. parties are, you know, they're weird, right? Because sometimes you'll do well, and then you'll be like, fuck, I need to like quit comedy. Yeah. This is how did I just. But then most of the time, it's just sort of like pleasant, you yeah. know, it's like you're talking and it's pleasant and people are laughing and there's pockets of laughter, yeah. oh, I hate but that there's pocket. always going to be resistance and because there are, because it. it's a party. Yeah. So like at the last one I did, there was a lady, just like a table of like five black people mm-hmm. and they were wearing, um, like the two men were wearing bow ties and the two women were like in full like African female regalia type shit you know like they're wa- <laughs> you know what i mean like they're wacky colored headdresses and stuff like that yeah those wacky colored headdresses. you know how wacky they i get. know how wacky it is so they're wearing their wacky fun clothes yeah and i was just i you know i'm just talking and but then the two women i could see them like my entire set were sh- not like shaking their heads like <laughs> So every time I looked over to the right to see them, they were shit. I was like, I wonder if we can get a nod out of these ladies. And then I look over and they're like, shit. <laughs> so they should. But then at the end, like it was. We- and then at the end, they clapped and were like, oh, that yeah, was nice. You know and I'm like, what are really you insane? Like you were shaking your head the whole time. You're really good at like um, bringing in people that you're like, if because you every comic sees just like the one person that's not laughing. You'll get them and then you'll make them into a joke and then everyone else will think it's hilarious. And so they're not liking it, but now they're liking you. Get that person. Yeah, like, I've okay, seen you do yeah. that before. It's awesome. They're like, okay, I guess he hates. She hates him, but yeah. it's get, it, he's addressing it. Yeah, like there's no elephant in the room. Yeah, no, he knows he's not doing well with the two. And then there's in the beeps. You, so you're like, you, there's so many things working against beeps. you at a Christmas party. There's beeps in the sound system. Boop, yeah. boop, boop, boop. And it's like, oh, that's just the hotel. They do that every thirty seconds. They'll run a, <laughs> they'll run a series of beeps yeah, through the in house. And you're like, right on. And then you're like, so the other day, my boop, boop, boop. And you're like, <laughs> great. Uh, if we can keep that going, if we can get that to, if, they, if we can get that to continue, that'd be great. So, and I mean, yeah, that's, it's funny to think like, well, this is what I do. Yeah. Like I come and do these Christmas parties in November, December, and that's just what I do. Yeah. Like it's insane. I don't get many Christmas parties. I got one last year. Um, in Rimby, I think you've done it before. It's the big hockey fundraiser in their hall. Probably. Anyway, so I did it with uh, Charles Haycock, and I, I was like, oh, they're gonna like me. And the show got really late, and then everyone was like wasted, and like I bombed so hard. Like only uh, the first few little area was was listening. The rest of people in the back were all like partying, and um, I bombed so hard. I left without saying goodbye. I was so embarrassed. But uh, one table saw me in the parking lot. And they're like, we thought you were awesome. That, that crowd was ridiculous. I'm like, well, as long as like one table 
was happy. I don't care now, I guess. <laughs> but so then... But they weren't really listening to Charles either? Or? No, Charles killed. Charles yeah. destroyed. Charles destroyed in front of me. And then I came up, pussy, pussy, dick, dick. And they're all like, but we... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but... um. Yeah, it's no, weird. It's great. weird when that happens, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Because it does happen because sometimes. Because it's happening where the, the opposite know. for me a lot, where it's hard to follow dirty. But that was so hard to follow clean. I think if it's really good, in either that environment, way, yeah, in that environment where people yeah. are like, "That was nice." So like, he's walking off stage, and they're thinking like, "That was nice. Yeah. Oh, that was funny. Then, he's hilarious, yeah. and it was nice and clean." They loved him, and they hated. That him. Yeah, is, that's the first. That thing was too. nice, and he was funny, and it was clean. Isn't you know nice? what I really liked it is he was clean. There was no sex jokes. Anyway, who's this clean? girl? What's this girl yeah, going to oh, be gonna about? She's going to be sweet. The other day, I was <laughs> sucking dicks, and they're like. <laughs> Uh. yeah so it was a, it was a, it was an all out like not good booking for kathleen but then i got a message uh the uh on sunday from my friend wes barker who's a magician comedian from oh yeah he's living in toronto now but i've worked with him a lot he's he's fucking like i don't think that guy could ever bomb ever because he does magic and comedy and he does them both well right like he has to do one better than the other he does it both equally well so he never does bo- badly and then he's he sends me a message he's like oh i just did that gig you did last year that you bombed <laughs> and i'm like oh because of course the guy says yeah we had a girl last year and she bombed Brutal. so so then but then he goes yeah and then there, but we were sitting at a table talking and then there was this guy that's like no we loved her she was we were the only table that loved her but we loved her i'm like those people are still fighting for me <laughs> <laughs> even at this year but yeah wes said it, they set him up for failure because they just kept on pushing it back farther and they were getting drunker and that's the thing is like you can't have live entertainment after 9 p.m in a party with like 200 people in a hall because there's going to be 150 that want to drink and party and 50 that will want to watch the show it's just like for sure do the show at 7 p.m when people are eating and then it's the worst when you're when you're headlining a show like that because the opener is up in the sweet spot yeah Right, so like the crowd's a little bit juiced, but not really. Yeah, and so they're still in kind of listening mode. Yeah, and then <clears throat> as they're set, as they're closing, you can feel the room like, okay, now we've got now two we or party. three. Now we've got two or three problems in here. Yeah, and then you get up to like, oh, this is a different crowd yeah. than you know. Like if I had just you know, and so I called them the wrong town name right off oh, the top. Oh, that. <laughs> Is a that, fucking like I had disaster. Most of it, and then I said, "How's everybody doing?" Ben- no, Rimby, because it was Bentley. That's where the gig oh, was. Bentley. I don't know if I've been to. I old think you, dirty I'm sure Bentley. you've done that one. It's a, it's been around for a while, but yeah. No, I said, "How's everybody in Rimby tonight?" And they're all like, "We're Bentley." Oh, you bitch! Oh, they were pissed at me. It, like, and you know, Bentley he, hates Rimby probably. Oh for, yeah. I don't know why oh, they would. Some guy in the in the parking lot was like, "So you know, we're from Bentley, right?" I'm bitch. like, "Bitch." Yeah, I got it. I'm, and this is where you're going to stay. I don't know what I'll tell you. <laughs> that is the worst. It's, it's, just, it's oh, weird, it, it too, such because like, it's such a weird thing for credibility. Like, As soon as you say the wrong name, it's like you've got to dig out of a five-minute hole. Yeah. Because they're like, she doesn't even know where she is. No, and she's like, just on this. Should like, it matter where the fuck I am? Like, You're, in, no. you're nowhere. <laughs> good evening, nowhere. I know, but that's. I think I probably did something like that because I'm good at digging myself deeper. Because I probably like, oh Bentley, Bentley. Well, who cares anyway? Like I, I mean, think that's I did what something that's like probably that, how we should start before. opening our shows. Any is just saying good evening, nowhere. How are you tonight? Yeah, good evening, nowhere. How are we? <laughs> how is everybody? Well, doing we're tonight? in the middle of it now, aren't we? Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like when you, oh my God, when we did the Vaders together in Yellowknife and you went out and you were like, good evening, White Knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they didn't, they so fucking much. hated they that. They hated it. They hated me. And then, and I then was I was laughing went, so hard by myself. <laughs> good evening, White Knife. And you could just feel the room go, fuck, I hate this <laughs> <Yeah>. guy. <laughs> And then even when it happened, I thought it was I thought it was just funny that you called it a different color. And then someone's like, "Oh no, because it's like white horse, and they hate white horse." I was like, "Jesus, that's even funnier!" I didn't even think of that. Good evening, level. white knife. And then they were like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> and then I was like, "Calm down, yellow horse. Yeah, we're yeah, we're right. I'm j- I'm just trying to have fun up here." And they're like, "You fucking <laughs> idiot!" That's what it was. Oh, I knew there was another level to oh, this. Oh, and you, and you know what's funny oh, too that was is like so funny. The best part, the best part of it is like those super liberal audiences. Yeah, you know they're fun, but um, there's always like a pocket in there that yeah. is like they want everything to be racist. Mm-hmm. So like after that show, um, they there was a guy that was talking to me about how it was sort of racist what I did. 
What? Because um, yellow, yellow knife, and white horse are like traditional Aboriginal names for those towns or whatever oh the my fuck. God, please. And so they're like, well, it was kind of racist. And I'm like, racist? Like, are you insane? You could say it's ignorant, but that's not racist. No, but I mean, but you even know. like, even if like, because ignorance is different than racism. Racism is like you are making an assumption on someone because of how they look based on their race. Ignorance is just like, I don't know anything about this person and I don't well, care. And that's what it is. Especially in the context, it's not of, it's in the context of doing a debater is you're yes. like, you're willfully ignorant. Like, that's part yes. of the thing that you're doing is yeah. I'm supposed to... I have to argue against the Northern Lights in Yellowknife. Yeah. Like, of, co- so, <laughs> like of course I'm going to be the heel. Yeah. So I might as well start off by saying good evening, White Knife. Well, have you seen that um, sketch from Baroness Von Sketch where um, they have... You know how that beginning of a show is like, you, we, are, we are on ceded territory and they thank them. So, yeah. then, so then it says, and thank you for... So, so she gets up and she's like, oh, where are you going? The performance started. She's like, oh, what? we're on someone else's land, so... Should we just go? And she's like, no, we're just thanking them for like, yeah, but this isn't our land. Like, I feel rude being here. Like, it was it was the best sketch <laughs> ever because it kind of made fun of that whole fake seriousness off the top of every single thing oh, where God. you pretend like you give a shit, but most people don't even know anything about the Aboriginal land that they're on. You know what I mean? No. I mean, but. we've done a good job of switching from thanking Christopher Columbus. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah. So we that we, took a real that, sharp we, turn a couple that, years ago. That needed to go. Yeah. Like where we kind of like we didn't say like anything about Aboriginals, yeah. and then we said at once a year we said thanks white people for displacing all these Aboriginals yeah. so that we could have this feast or whatever the fuck. So we had to yeah. we <laughs> had to we had to stop doing that. But now the pendulum has <laughs> swung so far oh, the other it's way. Crazy. Where it's like, okay, any white person that came over is a piece of shit. Yeah. Fine. Um, who cares about their exploring? Like, who gives a fuck? They're yeah. garbage. Fair enough. But now we're like, we stole your land. We took it over. Yeah. And now we're going to just be like, I know what treaty settled this hall. And so I'm smarter than you are. I'm better than you. Like, yeah. hey, this is treaty six, bitch. Like, <laughs> get the fuck up off me. You know, like. <laughs> And you're like, well, I don't know wizard. what treaty, like, uh, you know, oh, you don't even know the treaties out here? What's wrong with you? Oh, okay. Thanks, Christopher Columbus. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's like, I'm uh, like, uh, I'm, we're all expected. It's too stressful. And you know, today. what's funny too so is like, stressful. you know, the last podcast we did, you talked about, um, <laughs> what are we, you have ho- that look on you your talked face. about hockey players. Oh yeah. And how as assholes. Mm-hmm. And it turns out they were the victims. Oh, please. I started. They, you were this. victim shaming. No, I started. I they st- got bullied by their coaches and that's why they shamed you. No, when I saw that, just like the vaping thing, just like you, how okay. you were happy when they said that vaping's bad. Um, yeah. when I started seeing these scams, I was like, see, hockey is not a good sport. Hockey is full of terrible people. So I felt like my point was proven. Oh, I yeah. thought it was like, of ouch, I can't believe did. Kathleen went after those victims. I know, those poor boys. I'm sorry for everything. Their coaches were saying bad things. I know, them. but that doesn't excuse them for spitting on me and calling a pig. Okay? <laughs> like, do that's not, true. That is not excuse. Just because you got I, yelled. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So. <laughs> that is 100% true. <laughs> You weren't no, like, because, and their coaches probably weren't saying they were just yelling at them or whatever. Well, no, I think that there's a huge problem in the hockey community. It's a very toxic community. Like, there's lots of different, of course, of course, and I'm, of course, every sports has its problems. But like, there's a lot of issues in hockey that they're not willing to work within their own community to try and fix. And I think that's why you're starting to see, because of course, it takes one, the Calgary Flames coach, one. Now there's another one. Now the f- guy in Philly is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck Calgary. Fuck them. But uh, turn off that. And it was, ba- yeah, it was just such a weird thing. But now it's you're gonna see all these coaches getting accused, and they're all saying, "But that was years ago." So you still, you still were an asshole years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's oh nine, right? I mean, you yeah. can't say the n word in oh nine. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that he that, said that that, that was, was his that's thing. not a me too word. Like, yeah, no, you can't say when. When have you since I've been alive on this earth have you ever been able to use the n word? Like <laughs> when? Yeah. So well, it is funny too because, like, my you know, I've I, I I've heard that a hundred times from old white dudes. Yeah, that was you know. then. This is now. No, no boys I, will be boys. Like, you turn off that N word music. Oh like, yeah, for sure. I've heard it like, uh, especially at hockey. Yeah, the, like if you I, were listening to any rap, a coach would come in and say, "Say it." They would say that exactly. Sure. They wouldn't say rap music. No, that's cr- see that is a toxic that stuff like but that is allowed I would, to happen within every single level of hockey. 
Yeah, I know, but I, I but I would also see that just like going to a bar. I would go to a bar and be like, "Yeah, let's watch some basketball." And then somebody would like the n word would be thrown Who around. Who the fuck like, were you? Hang- I like I was not. I was no. I mean, sheltered. this is like Alberta and Saskatchewan old people. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I you know. know you have you would. So yeah. even the Calgary coach, it's weird because he he probably thought like, oh, because they were they had a six game losing streak, mm. the Flames, before this came out. Oh, so he must have been like in his hotel room thinking like, how could this get worse? Yeah, and then boom. and then pow. Oh, the yeah. M-bomb from nine years ago. But do you think that there could have been, like, something even worse? And he's, like, he took some sort of, a, okay, I'll quit. Because, like, so you said that. But, like, do you want us to tell everyone that you put your finger up all the players' butts or something? Well, no, I think what you happened. Know? Kicking. Yeah, he was kicking. Yeah, fuck that guy. I think fuck hockey coaches guy. had, like, I think what happened is Graham James raped kids. Yeah. He was a coach that raped kids. Yeah. And then after he was outed as like this piece of shit, yeah. then other coaches in hockey were like, well, as long as you don't fuck him. Yeah. Just say That's what. That's gross. So then you can be like, hey, you piece of shit. So now I'm going to beat like, them. And then I'm going to go home and yeah. masturbate afterwards. Yeah. Fuck. So then Graham James became this sort of like, well, just don't go to the James level. You know, yeah. don't touch him, but you can freak out on him. You can yell at him. You can do whatever you want. No, there's going to be, a, you're going to see a lot of this happening in hockey now. And it's going to, and it's, it's just this, it's a hockey mentality. I'm sure that this other sports have different issues, but. It is well, a, and you also, it, it is changing just within the sport itself yeah. because now like it is, um, you know, it's a recreational sport. There's a lot of kids who play it and there, so you really can't go and yell at kids anymore oh yeah like, no. you know you really can't well like, even when i was a kid like um they had all those signs up being like it let the kids play a game because parents yeah would lose their it's shit. just the game or whatever my mom would get like she was a screamy mom like she would if would she yell at the ref oh yeah it was bad it was always embarrassing and then she, then she found out that she had type 2 diabetes so that was really contributing to her short temper but uh she's she, like what are you fucking blind <laughs> yeah. and then she found out she had type 2 diabetes yeah. and might go blind and then was like what are you <laughs> what are you stupid <laughs> I don't joke about blindness anymore, Kathleen. No, I don't. <laughs> you're, I- <laughs> you're fucking ridiculous. You're fucking ridiculous. But like, my mom had a joke. She's like, "What's the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull?" And she'd say, "Lipstick." Ha ha ha. Like she was proud of being a hockey mom like that. Yeah. But she calmed down there mostly because it's like your kids are like, "Could you not embarrass me like that? Like, can you not scream?" Like, it I didn't gets, have to worry about that at my musical theater classes. No, it gets, I mean, <laughs> well, and it also it gets time. weirder. Like, if you're yelling at a peewee game, yeah. it's like, oh, I mean, that's dumb, but what the yeah. fuck? But then once it gets to midget, it's yeah. like you're watching a midget A game, and you're, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, Connie, fucking relax. Like, <laughs> they're all 17 now. Yeah. Like, we don't, they're not going to the NHL. Didn't they change that league? Weren't they going to change it from midget to something because that was offensive to the little people? I wonder if they should change it to. Someone said that that was happening. Really? Yeah, they were going to change Midget Hockey League. They have like they have weird names. They do. Even in Adam, Squirt, like they in Squirt. Yeah, in in the states, the, I squirt? think Novice is called Squirt. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely not a Novice. <laughs> that is not a Novice. That ain't no Novice. Boo. That ain't no Novice. If they're out there, that squirting. ain't no Midget either. <laughs> That's a Bantam. <laughs> Bantam. Only a bantam can make a squirt novice <laughs> or a novice squirt. squirt. What does bantam even mean? Is it like they wanted to call it know. Batman, but they didn't have yeah. enough letters? Bantam and Robnum. <laughs> bantam and Robnum. <laughs> oh, no. That's stupid. I love that. But yeah, I just can't believe in the last podcast you were, you know, wow. Well, you know what? Shitting on victims. Sometimes those victims need a little shit on their face. <laughs> I don't know. They I don't feel like do. I was shitting on victims. No, you weren't. Shit- yeah, I was just joking. You were not shitting on victims. <laughs> they were not vi- the people that harassed you were not victims. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, some of them might have been, but they were passing their victimhood on to me. Yeah. Anyway, but okay. Do you have friends that like know all the funny YouTube videos? Like, <laughs> I do. I have friends that know all the funny YouTube videos. I'll go to my no. friend Nick and Alyssa's house, and they'll always be like, uh, I'll I'll be like, oh, I have something to show you, and they've always been like seeing it. So I'm like, damn it. But um. They always know what to watch. So they made me watch this thing called Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. And it's like puppets. And it's supposed to look like a kid's show. And it like the first episode is very like lots. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't look weird at all. And they have like this pencil board that's like making them be creative. <laughs> there's a line. I don't I'm, I'm, I'm blamed because I'm high, but I'm trying to remember <laughs> everything. But so there's this one part where they're like talking about colors and they're like, being creative with them and then they say green is not a creative color anyway 
If anybody has seen Green this, is not a creative color. Do like, because they they're like, like be creative with colors. So they go red, orange, blue, green. Green is not the creative color. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> but it so gets really, 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 really weird. And it's so hard to explain. Um, but it's six episodes. And uh, six episodes, mini episodes, like on okay. YouTube that they put out. And do they hug? Is there a hug part of it? It's no, it's not about hugging. It's just like this weird thing that, and then it gets weirder and weird. It's like a very good thing to watch when you're high too. It's like okay. very fucked up, but it's interesting. I can't remember what the name of this, the people that did it is called, but they also did a, like a, a commercial where people were the things. I don't know. This is, I need, I need to have a better. I need to have a better vision of what's in front of me because this is. I need to be sense. watching it. Yeah. I need to be like, watching it. The next time I describe a YouTube video, I need to be watching At it moment, while it's happening. I need to describe a video while I'm watching it. Well, we could do. I mean, we could do that. What's that? Um, the, the Your Mama's House podcast. They do that where they just like literally have a YouTube. YouTube, like it's part of their podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not going to do that, but I mean, <laughs> their podcast. Their podcast is. They're Americans. It's fine. They shit chat with somebody or whatever, and yeah. but then they'll play them cr- the crazy shit that they've seen that week on YouTube. Okay. So they'll play like, you know, like, what do you think of this? And then they'll play the guest a clip and yeah. it'll be like a Japanese car mechanic backing somebody into a bay and then the person speeds up and crushes them. <laughs> and they'll be like, ah! And they're pinned against this car. And then the car moves ahead and the guy's like, ah! <laughs> and they'll be like, what do you think of that? So they'll just like play the most fucked up things from YouTube for their guest, and the guest has to be like, I. I mean, that's, that's what people do. Like, that's what some people just sit around and do with their friends because it's fun to see who's seen what on YouTube. I guess if you were younger, that's what you you would do. Even You'd catch adults, up on though. each other's clips. No, I guess so. But like, but like you go to an adult's house and they're like, seen it, seen it, seen it. They have seen like, all what do you fuck? What do you do with your time? You're no, watching they're YouTube. Good, they're just they like find good stuff. I don't know. I don't know how they find it all, but hmm. I found one thing that they didn't see it was uh, Adam's Porn. nephew's showed <laughs> no <laughs> Porn. <laughs> Adam's nephews showed me the pee pee song, and it's made by like the same people that did Baby Shark. So it's oh, like boy. it's like a little cartoon, and then it t- teaches kids how to go potty. And it's like, first, first, take your pants down, then your underwear, sit on the toilet and pee, pee, pee. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous, but it was so funny. It probably works. It probably does work. I don't even think girls need to be potty trained, do they? Yes, they do. Girls just, they're like, oh, there you go. Psst. What do you mean? Well, I, boys, I always thought like boys need to be potty It's always trained. harder for boys, isn't it, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, harder I, what, for boys. No, I'm not the saying victims, the true victims the of the world victims. are boys. No, I'm trying to say that <laughs> it's, you know, girls are smarter. Boys are the ones that need the help. And okay, the now you just sound like some sort of corporate comic that comes out and be like, Listen, we hate women, but we couldn't live without them. Look, they do a lot. <laughs> and I love them. But one time. <laughs> Anyways, oh, they're the greatest man. and I love my wife and I wouldn't uh, <laughs> trade a minute of it. God, we've had some great times. But there was this once. <laughs> also, that, you know. Yeah, and you can just do that. Uh, That's your premise. Yeah, exactly. I your love premise it. is just like, listen, the greatest thing that ever happened to me was the day I met my wife. <laughs> but there was this one time and then you just shit on her for 18 minutes. <laughs> But I love her. But God, I love her. I wouldn't be here without her. Oh, God, no. No. I'd be more like successful. She legally has to be with me everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not allowed to see that other girl. <laughs> She's the only one that keeps me from fucking the other people. <laughs> Which is good. Because they're pretty fucked up people, these other ones that I <laughs> would be fucking if I these didn't know. These other ones? <laughs> <laughs> these other ladies. Oh. Yeah, that's what guys don't give uh, you know their wives enough credit for. Is like you know, yeah, you'd be cheating, but you know, you'd be fucking going you know you, with crazy women. You know yeah. what I mean? Not that women are crazy; they can't be. No, we but, can't be. Uh, they're beautiful and brave. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful and gorgeous. Even the crazy ones are beautiful and brave. <laughs> Even crazy chicks are brave. <laughs> well, you know who's crazier, a homeless man or a homeless woman? Oh, I think that woman, just because I think it's harder to be a homeless woman. And I know that sounds like I'm trying to give us Are a point. Are you trying to? No, I'm, for sure it's but harder like, to be a homeless woman. But like imagine being a woman like with a period. And oh, once a month, yeah, you're right. The I only never clothes about you that. have are going Gone, to get vanished. soiled because you can't stop it. Oh, my God. So guys get smokes and you're getting tampons. Yeah, like that's a huge thing. Like a lot of people don't um, 
Like there's a there's a menstruating ad- homelessness. Yes. I didn't think of it. There's a a, a, wimp, a female homeless association in Vancouver that does drives that like they collect feminine hygiene products for homeless women. Because yeah, like you don't even think you about don't that. Don't think about that. You're just like, well, yeah, I mean, fucking, you know, that's why you don't see homeless women in white pants. <laughs> Not because so, they're dirty. Just it's always in. They're they always don't be in, embarrassed. They're always into the browns. <laughs> what color does blood turn when it's dry? <laughs> Give me three pairs of those. <laughs> I just think that being a homeless woman sounds like the most terrifying thing because not only like are you bleeding, but uh, also like it's very scary. Uh, men can be very scary, and yeah. you're a woman by yourself and without a home. So you now have to try to depend on some guy who says he's going to help you and then, oh, you know, you get assaulted or something. Like, it's Yeah, and there's a ton of, I mean, the, there's a ton of, uh, yeah, like if, you know. And a lot know, of homeless women get into prostitution too, which yeah, and you're, is Yeah, and then, you know, think about if you're a woman with a home. Yeah. When you're going for, you know, it's nighttime and you're going from a place to another place. Yeah, you're kind of like you're running, but feeling you're slightly unsafe yeah. until you close the door and then, and then you're, you're fa- you know, and they never and have. And then you check the the shower just in case. Yeah. But they never get that feeling like homeless women never have that sort of like close the door and go. Yeah. Phew. Do you as a man check in the shower when you get home? No. I always check. You check the shower just in case there's a man there ready to murder oh, you? Yeah, just in case. Well, not just because like I'm a woman, but because I listen to a lot of murder podcasts. <laughs> Is that where they're or still happening? Shower ba- there's a lot of shower-based murders still I just happening? No, I'm just saying I think that someone could hide there easily. Like, in a, if I'm in a hotel, I will like check a shower when I get in. Really? That's fucking paranoid. No, I think that's being a woman. Really? Honestly. I don't know. I, I was just to. watching Shameless and like uh, they they had this whole thing about how the bar on Shameless got voted one of the top rapey bars in Chicago. So oh. they tried to like change it up and make it safer for women and they like had they started this uh, vagina safe movement. <laughs> so like every bar could be certified vagina safe. But like the the guys Why were like they call it, it vagina be. safe. Or it was something better than that. Okay, good. I thought. Yeah, like no we, we you know it's like safe vagina. I don't know. <laughs> 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 but then the women were saying to the guys like uh, her pussy's marked as safe yeah yeah but then the women were saying to the guys are like it can't be that bad and then they're like oh oh yeah i know like that and they start listing of things they do on a daily basis like walk with my keys in my hands and guys never even think about all that shit and women it's just like oh no yeah. that's normal like that is normal i was taught to walk with something between my fingers when i was like 10 years old hmm. like guys hmm. aren't taught that but like no, I guess I never thought of like the well. Now key everything is like keyless entry. Fucking, what are you gonna do? Beat him to death with a fob? You're, yeah, you're yeah. fucking. You're oh, going down. Oh, you can down. get things like they have. Oh these, yeah, they're like they look like little kittens, and then like you put your fingers through them. And they got their ears are very pointy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you could just throw a cat at him. <laughs> I'm just gonna like, bring my cat uh, with me everywhere. And throw it at anyone that tries. <sighs> and then ah <laughs> oh, fuck. You never like, feel it, like when you're walking like somewhere, you ever feel like, oh my God. And then you hear someone behind you and you're like, oh my God. But you don't want to look back because you don't want to be rude. You know, you don't want them to think um, that you're scared of them, but you are scared of them. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't Maybe really, it's just my neighborhood. I don't know. Yeah, you are in a sketchy neighborhood. I am. There's a lot of, but it's a lot of drug stuff. It's not like people, well, no, those, they're, they'll rob you. <laughs> oh no, they'll rob the fuck out of you. <laughs> oh no, they'll rob the fuck out of you. <laughs> and if they're high, they'll, you know, it, yeah, it's, I don't know. I think, I don't really, yeah, I mean, I live in some shitty little town, right? So. But even just being a dude, like when you went on the road, so if you went on the road with a comic that no. didn't want to go out after, but you did, you would just go out and not even think twice about it, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be worried. So I would be like, okay, well, I don't know if I want to go out by myself because I don't want this comic to have to identify my body tomorrow morning. Like the whole, all of that shit runs through your head and it's not being paranoid oh no i mean for guys you're thinking i'll be lucky if i find somebody that wants to have sex with yeah, me yeah. consensually yeah <laughs> yeah forget exactly. the, taking it against my will are you insane <laughs> like that I, that's never gonna happen mm. like i'm i'm hoping to get halfway to raped yeah you just open w- to, <laughs> hoping to find consensual a woman who's like sure let's do that <laughs> Not a woman who's like, come here, you fucking... I mean, I'm never going to find that. No, no, Not many men will. It's what he wants, but it's not going to find it anywhere. No, not in an alley. But it's, yeah, like, I don't think guys think about all the shit that they don't have to think about. No, but Periods, I mean, there's more guys people. that are like, oh, I'll walk you to the car. I'll, you know, Yeah, but whatever. you can't trust those guys. You're like, who is this fucking guy that wants to walk you oh, to the yeah, car? Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Especially if he's homeless looking. Like, I'll walk you to oh, your car. Can you help me <laughs> walk okay. you to your car? Sure, Johnny Brain Drama. <laughs> Let's walk Johnny down to you. Let's, <laughs> let's let's walk down the alleyway to the root of your childhood problem. 
and then you can have your way with me. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, it's just stuff that you don't think. Like, even the whole period thing. Like, what do you do? The guys? Yeah, and then you go back to a guy's place, and you're like, why are there so many skulls on these <laughs> sticks? <laughs> Oh, no. Those look like female skulls or male skulls? Oh, they're girls. I'm dead. (laughs) I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, they're girl skulls. (laughs) (laughs) Is this guy super tough or a freak? Oh, boy. (laughs) He's a freak. (laughs) They're all female (laughs) skulls. You're checking the skull gender. (laughs) If those are male skulls, I'm kind of turned on. But... If we they're kill female, together. I better run. I better run. I better get the hell out of here. I like a guy who can handle his business. Did you um <laughs> 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 Did you participate in Black Friday or Cyber Monday? Uh, and I'm not talking about masturbating in a chat room. Boy yo, boy. Hey yo. No, I didn't do no, I didn't. I mean, I do all my Christmas. I have to my brain is like I have You're to You're done already? No, oh. I have to compartmentalize everything. So right now I'm just thinking about like getting doing the shows that I have to do. Yeah. And then once that's done, then I'm like, okay, good. Now I can go shopping and enjoy Christmas or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. But that doesn't usually happen till like the twenty first or the twenty second. Oh my god. And then I get everything done. It's yeah. not that, it's not insane. I mean, I like, you know, it, I have to work on a deadline anyway. Yeah. Like I, so for me, it's like, okay, I've got three days left. Let's get after it. Let's get it done. Yeah. And then the only time, there's always like one time where you're like, oh, I can't get that anymore because it's sold out because I waited too long. Yeah. But then but, you can just get it in February. Yeah. <laughs> Your so. parents don't have to put $5,000. But like, are you done down. Christmas shopping? I'm like not really buying anybody anything. <laughs> I've been shopping for myself, but no. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to, uh, I'll get Adam, I got Adam some stuff and like, I'll get my nephew stuff, but I'm not like. Yeah, there's no like, need to go insane anymore. Yeah, like I just don't. I'm not going to. Kids get spoiled. It's just the nature of. But kids are supposed to get spoiled at Christmas. Yeah, I mean, That's it's like the nature of childhood. Christmas is for kids. Yeah. It is. And for adults Like my parents had hard. For their family. My parents didn't have any money, but, you know, at Christmas time, we would get, like, you know, I'd get the Nintendo or I'd get the whatever, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's why that that ticket that I gave my mom on Christmas was so painful because right. they just dropped probably five exactly. grand on toys yeah. and, and it's Christmas, and then I'm like, ah, gotcha! No! And they were like, first of all, I was thinking, we're never going to get out of that $5,000 hole, but then I was thinking... We're up $45,000. <laughs> We're going to go to Bermuda in February. <laughs> like she was already thinking about a tropical. Oh, she had it all spent. Oh, my God. Then, she was thinking yeah. about a tropical <laughs> fucking vacation in February. Oh, like yeah. it's going to be minus 40 and we're going to fucking fly away. Yeah. For two weeks, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, if you believe this, you're fucking <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it wasn't just finding out that it wasn't real; it was reading how dumb you are. Like, if you believe, oh my know, goodness me! Oh no, it was like I would have been. It was anger I and been tears. Fucking it was fallen. tears. It was tears. I like that. That's become the theme of our podcast. We do this, but then we also talk about that super special memory. I wonder if you like. What you're, did you talk, have you talked to, did you ever talk to your mom about that like later in life? No, I didn't. No, it was I just like. And I was going to talk to her about, but she's, she passed away. But uh, no, I don't remember. And she never brought it up, which means I, this is why I know she was so hurt by it. Because if I did something weird, she'd tell that story for life. Sure, because it's funny. But she was not into that, that habit. She was so no. upset. Oh, because that yeah. is, that is like if your daughter is a comedian or whatever, yeah, then yeah, your yeah. friends would be like, when did you know she was funny? And then it would be like that story. Yeah. Like, oh, she got me this ticket or whatever. <laughs> but it was, was like, it hurt guy. so much <laughs> that she was like, well, she, she never was funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she was never funny. She was awful. And she still isn't. She was a horrible person. <laughs> She's not funny. I guess we should tune this up. Tune it up. Did you get Disney Plus? Yeah, I did. I love it. Yeah, just to watch Mandalorian. See, I, that's the only thing I'm not watching. <laughs> oh, my God. But I'm not a Star Wars person. What a girl move. I know. It's such a chick thing. No, you would like Mandalorian. I think I would like it because of Baby Yoda. And I yeah. think that's why they put Baby Yoda in it, to get people to watch it. Because how can you not look at that thing and be like, oh, I don't want to watch now? Well, and Boba Fett was the coolest Star Wars character ever. What right? does he do in this? Well, he's not in it, but it's like sort of, you know, the Mandalorian is the same kind of comes from the same line of people as the as Boba Fett did. Bounty. What is a Mandalorian? A person? It's or? like a bounty hunting weird... I don't know. It's like some religion or something. Oh. I don't know. But they're all bounty hunters, right? So you get... You know, they travel around. There's a lot of travel. 
Yeah, a lot of sites. And they try to catch people and bring them back for money. Hmm. I've just been watching all the old stuff to find the stuff that they have warned people it might be culturally insensitive. <laughs> Because they had to put a warning oh, out. Yeah. Say that there are movies that were made in the 50s that are probably pretty racist and sexist. And like but. I watched Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and there's so many digs at women in it. Oh really? my. Oh yeah. He's like, they after they play uh, with the cartoons, do you remember Bed Knobs and Broomsticks? Oh my God. So they play a cartoon soccer game and then they got to get back on the bed knob and they have this new metal thing. And he's like, he takes it from Angela Lansbury who's the woman and he's like I'll take that women have a tendency to lose everything <laughs> just yes. like, as long as it's not their virginity <laughs> that's disgusting but it was I love watching the old old ones like I want to watch Pollyanna I gotta watch the parent trap not Lindsay Lohan the original parent trap because uh yeah I love and they have all the Simpsons but they haven't fixed the screen the thing thingy? Yet. okay so have we won I think we won five dollars this whole time we've been doing this. Holy I won forty dollars. Did you? But not on a podcast no, thingy. I had it. So at there's home. no thirty fives. Okay. Is there any twenties? Is there any twenties? I don't see one. Kyle Jones. There is a twenty. We won ten dollars. Yeah! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh, wow! Oh my god! I now I know how your mom sorry. felt. Now I'm I know how sorry. your mom felt for a half an hour. Oh my god! I just <laughs> I just got showered by wax. Oh, uh, it's worth it. Oh, that's so exciting! A hot wax shower. Our luck is turning up. Finally, now is there a one? No. You can you probably win more than one. Can you double dip on these? I think you could double dip. Oh, that's uh, exciting! I'm really excited about this. No, it's a ten dollar. I just think that we just got a really good genuine reaction out of us, too. <laughs> That's the best part of that. Well, because we were so used to losing, <laughs> losing that it's like, is there a 20? And then I saw, and I actually saw a like, 20. And no. I'm like, That's the number we're looking. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if you were looking for food in shit. <laughs> and then, like, for a month, you're like, this is all shit. It's all human feces. You'd see one kernel And then of you'd corn. see one fucking rusty carrot and you'd be like, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> You're going on a second trip. <laughs> You're about to eat a shitty carrot. <laughs> oh, God, this is yeah, like this $10, that, that won't get us to Walmart, but it feels nice. No. Just to be a winner for once. Yeah. But before you know? before we leave this, I just have to bring up. So with Disney Plus, dude, there's a show. On, like what I get it? on a track. Okay, there's a show on it called Encore, and they take like um, people who like their high school musical, and then they come back and redo it oh. as adults, and it's the. That would be fucking it's funny. Fucking funny. It it is sad and it's sad. Sometimes Diary of too. Anne Frank. That's what I thought of. I, I like, haven't <laughs> acted in <laughs> like all these. Yeah, you got to go. All back these and people do it. that are like, I haven't. Oh, and that was the other funny thing about Diary of Anne Frank that I didn't. <laughs> What's the other funny thing about Diary of Anne Frank? This is pretty funny. Um, th- I think that there were three um, people that got like bit parts. Yeah. That wrote a scene. To add they, to it. Yeah, they wanted. No. Yeah, because they were like, "Well, this is fucking stupid." <gasps> We got to come to all the rehearsals, and I only have one line, and this is fucking dumb. Oh my god! So they were like, "We need, you know, we just need to put add a scene that we're this. get, you know, get some of the other people that are stuck in this attic some lines." And they just made up a scene, and did they? Yeah, do it? well, the no, because the director was like, "You, you got to be fucking kidding! You can't like do this that. is a historical document." We're already gonna fucking butcher it. Do you know and what now the we're scene gonna was? add a add a scene? No, it would have just been them, like you know, playing cards or something. Yeah, it would have been them up in the attic, like, oh boy, <laughs> here we what are. What are we doing? Attic. Do you hear that? Huh? Quiet. You know, it would have been something. Quiet, everyone. Shh. There's Germans coming. <laughs> schnell, schnell. <laughs> oh no, that's German for fuck. <laughs> That's German for we're fucked. I think that would be so funny to see you reprise your role uh, in the oh, diary of Anne Frank. Frank. We should just try and get a fringe. Uh, oh, that would be thing, fucking funny. And then just put up like to a, do the diary of Anne Frank at the fringe with just the two of us. It's just us <laughs> playing multiple diary characters. of Anne Frank table read. <laughs> <laughs> is what the fuck is this play? It's a diary of Anne Frank table read. 
<laughs> and then we would just like uh, us two, and then Jim we, could be in it, whatever. And we like, get we one person from people. the audience to play. Yeah, Anne. and then okay, everybody <laughs> just read through the script. I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> that would be so funny. Where's my kitty? <laughs> And then you have an audience like, I'm leaving. I'm fucking leaving. This is ridiculous. And that would make us the hit of the fringe. Yeah. That would be good. <laughs> yeah. What's happening up in Kathleen's attic? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty quiet up here. It's been quiet for years. Yeah, just a couple of <laughs> bottles of cognac smacking together. <laughs> Jews, Jews used to drink oh a lot of cognac God. back then. Well, we did it. We did it. We podcasted. Yeah. We won ten dollars. Yeah, and we're doing New Year's Eve together. That's right in Saskatoon, Park Town. Park Town. Get your tickets now, everybody. Yeah. while they're um, they'll always be available. And I think we're going to be doing a live taping on December. F- no, December first, January first. Jan- in I Saskatoon, think maybe we will we'll keep see. you. I'm trying to figure it all out, but we'll keep you abreast. Keep you abreast of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know what a breast means either. I mean, it just, it sounds like a breast. You know what I mean? Like, so you're like, I can't I'll, say the word a breast without thinking about My boob has something breast. to tell you about the situation. I'll keep you a titty of this. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm going to motorboat the situation. <laughs> huh? Like, if there's any updates, you can suck my nipple. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, yeah, I just don't think a breast is the right word ever. It's inappropriate. It should be banned. We should cancel a breast. Good idea. <laughs> cancel. Well, I guess we did it. We did it. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. Sorry for rambling there for a minute. <laughs> I was like talking and I'm like, what am I even saying right Whatever. now? Whatever. That's the beauty of podcasting, <laughs> Kathleen. It's beautiful. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good. See you next week. <laughs> yeah. Have a nice week. <laughs> Jingle all the way. <laughs>